So let's go to the magic of FaceTime. I see his ear. There he is. AJ Agazarm. How are you? <laughs> What's up? Good to talk to you again, my friend. Yeah. Wait, what did you say when you first started? You said that things didn't go my way? In the in the debut. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. Well, I mean, the fact that you didn't get the W, right? When you don't get the W, that implies it didn't go your way. Yeah, yeah, but who did? Who, uh, according to who, though, right? The judges. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, I, I, I didn't lose sleep over it. I wouldn't have been happy if I would have been given that decision. I just, I had some missed opportunities. And, you know, he squeaked out, I guess, in his eyes, a victory. But that was no victory, in my opinion. Do you think you deserve to win that fight? I, I think I'd, I should have finished him much sooner. But, you know. Oh, did we lose him? Yeah, it looks like we did. All right, we will get back to him. Interesting start to the uh, interview. I was just sort of setting the scene there. I wasn't really uh, waxing poetic about what transpired in the fight. It was a fight that happened uh, back in January at Bellator 214. Uh, AJ fought a man named Jesse Roberts and lost via split decision. So uh, at least one of the judges thought that he deserved to win that fight. And you'll recall he was in studio, as I said, I think it was back in November to announce this decorated BJJ career. Do we have him back? AJ, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Um, do you, uh, I, I was saying before we lost you there, do you, do you think you deserve to win that fight? I, I think I should have finished it much sooner than I did. I was, you know, working through some stuff, trying to get, figure things out. It was my first professional MMA fight. And, um, yeah, I, I don't think he should be hanging his hat on on getting that. If you looked at both the first round and the second round, it ended with me having my hooks in and having his back. Like that's that's tough. That's tough for any man. If there's no time left, if it's just you know, hey, we're we're coming up against each other in in a street. There's nobody. There's not going to be anybody that's going to come around and say, hey, time's up. So there's the sport aspect of it. So it makes me have to work within those five minute intervals. Right, those five minute intervals that I need to be able to do whatever I need to do to get the job done. So I think I was working through that. It was still kind of, um, you know, a very new process, and I, it it was it was crazy being in there. I mean, it's it's a fight. It's a fight in front of hundreds of thousands of people on Paramount Television. In in a in a big city, like I said, Leonardo da Vinci wasn't he wasn't he wasn't uh, judged by his first painting. It took years for people to see him as the great painter that he is. After he came out with Mona Lisa, it's not going to take me as long to be be a great fighter as it did Leonardo da Vinci to be. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm listening. Can't hear you. You can't hear me. I can hear you. Leonardo da Vinci? No, you can't hear me at all? What's happening? Take the headphones can't hear out. You. Take the headphones out. Maybe you can hear me then. The Let's audio's see. linked over. It's it's I'm hearing other stuff. I'm not hearing anything you're saying. Try taking the headphones out. Can I hear you now? Hello. I keep getting ads. Ads? What is happening? This is there bizarre. Now I can hear you. There you go. Now I can hear oh, you. Oh, how are you now? Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, sorry about that. We heard everything that you said, though. Okay. Okay, cool. So am I done? Yeah, well, no, not not done, but uh, <laughs> I, I get what you were implying there. Um, by the way, what are you doing? Are those nunchucks? Yeah, oh, yeah, these are these are nunchucks. Wow, look at you. They're, re they're really heavy nunchucks, too. Whoa, they're steel. Yeah. Woo. Whoa, if those hit you in the... uh Almost broke my phone. If those hit you in the groin, that that would be problem. Yeah, so you got to really work on 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 all those things. You got to have the the timing down. What is that? Oh, this is uh this is CBD. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you do you CBD have CBD is great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ally Quinto was talking to me about that earlier. Do you, do you have uh, your next one lined up? 
my next CBD shot? No. No. I just I only do one a day. No, next fight. Oh yeah, I don't. Right, but that, that's why I'm out here in Stockton. I'm not, I'm out here training, and what normally would be like it would it'd be really tough to go through workouts if I didn't have CBD. And Nick and Nate turned me on to it, and it's it's insane. Like yesterday, Nick Nick and I ran a half marathon. Oh, in in Stockton, that's thirteen point two miles. Yeah, or something like that. I don't even know. I think we finished like thirteen and a half, but yeah, we ran we ran a pretty good amount yesterday and what would normally be really painful on my knees or, or my joints i just have been rubbing cbd balm on it and it's been able to you know make make this uh whole training process out here in stockton really painless and um i've been enjoying the workouts much much better it's actually funny because nate was telling me about he used to have um he used to rub rub cbd balm on him all together on on his body and he'd feel so much better to be able to train and then he told me about it and nick told me about it nick educated me on it on everything that was important about it and i started rubbing it on my elbows because i don't know if you saw my first fight ariel yeah i was i was having problems getting full extension on my punches and a lot of that had to do with the joints in my elbow being um not being able to get full extension because i don't know if you've seen any of my grappling matches people like to try to arm bar me so it's been it's been tough on my joints, and I, I haven't been able to get like full range, full full reach with my punches. And Nick's been working me through that, and he, they told me about using CBD. So I've been rubbing CBD on my on my elbow, and I have now f- much better full range for a punch. And I think that was one of the things I wanted to, you know, was a big takeaway for me in that first fight. Um, so it's been it's been helping healing that process in like the natural way. I think what a lot of people do to overcome pain is they, they take aspirin or ibuprofen and you would just ruin your liver. But CBD is a way to help that inflammation, strengthen the joint and, and, and reduce the pain. And it's been, it's been crazy. Wow. So we, we, we just finished a half marathon yesterday and I feel great. I could feel I could go do another one. Whereas like when I, I used, people don't know this about me, but I used to run track and cross country and I swam in high school. I did you know, I did that. And that's one of the reasons why I look up to Nick so much is because he's, he, enc- he embodies that, just that whole true martial artist sp- spirit to be able to do er- anything. Whereas a guy like Ben Askren, for example, like he, he's so one dimensional, he's a wrestler and, and he's, he's a shitty wrestler for MMA. If y- you probably talk to him and he'll say something about jujitsu, like, Oh yeah, I, I don't want to work on my jujitsu because he's not good at it. And he doesn't want to, he doesn't have the courage to, kind of let his ego down and say, okay, I'm going to roll my sleeves up and, and get in there and get better at jujitsu. Yeah. For me, I'm horrible at boxing. It, there's no doubt about it. I spent the first half of my life working on my, my wrestling, my, my, my endurance with cross country and swimming, then moved into Brazilian jujitsu. And now I'm, you know, b- building the, the striking aspect of it with two of the most uncompromising individuals you'll ever meet, not only in the sport of, of MMA, but the sport of, sport world so, in so itself. So let me ask you, AJ, because I, I recognize that that uh, kitchen. I was going to ask you about that. I recognize the new fridge. I'm all up on the Instagram stories and whatnot. What? I, I, I pay attention to everything. The new fridge. Oh, yeah. Well done. Uh, okay, you, you, you are in the infamous Nick Diaz kitchen, right? Yeah, it's a, can you read that? Yes, this is, I feel like I'm in like one of those movie sets where I get to say, <laughs> don't be. <laughs> yes, I, I see that. Uh, this is amazing. Ariel, Nick told me, Nick told me, he's like, because he just left right before he called me. He told me you were supposed to call at 1245, and he was he was there over here lingering, and I could tell. He's like, I don't want to talk to Ariel. Oh, come on. And uh, But I swear to God, he was lingering, and I was like, well, what are you lingering for if you don't want to talk to Ariel? And he started running. Why? <laughs> he start, uh, He said, he goes, you better tell Ariel to say something nice about me, otherwise I'm going to slap him. What are you talking? So, I love Nick. What are you saying? I'm not saying... I'm not saying that Nick was thinking about you when he was punching this refrigerator. Oh, my <laughs> dear Lord. That is the old refrigerator. What's the problem here? I have Nick's back. I told the world, stop bothering the guy. When he wants to come back, if he wants to come back, he'll come back. Stop trying to uh, bait him yeah. into coming back. I, w- I was trying to have his back there. I know you disagreed with me. You went on my Instagram and all that. It turned into a whole thing. But I, You I, unfollowed me, and I got really butthurt about yeah. that. Yeah, but now we're good, right? Yeah, we're we're best friends. So what's until, happening with Nick? Can you give you us an do update? Until you something again. 
No. Oh, well, that's why I come to you. Give us the lowdown. Um, I I think the lowdown is is you know we're like I said they're Nick and Nick and and both Nick and Nate are, are two of the most uncompromising fighters you'll ever meet, and that's with themselves and the people that they that people that they have interactions with. You you saw it with Masvidal. Masvidal is kind of the same mindset. That dude started popping off to him, and what what happened? Yeah. He got in there and just punched the dude. Don't run your mouth, and 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 that won't happen. And I feel like there are a lot of people in this in this sport that don't understand that mentality. And the more time that I spend out here, and the more time I spend around them, I understand where that comes from. Because Nick and I and Nate, we have similar upbringings, right? The only, the only difference is is that he went to the world of fighting and took on just a huge a huge task and and kind of carving and paving this way for everybody in the sport today. I do you understand? I negotiated my own deal with with Bellator. I did that, and I have a a a, a, a contract, a four fight contract with them, and I'm in a position to be able to have a career as an MMA fighter because of what Nick did in his career to make way for me to be able to have that as a, as a white boy from Florida. Mm. Do you understand? Like, yeah, I understand. You know, I, I know you look, I know you look up to, uh, I know you look up to um, George, George a lot. And I think George is a great fighter. I thought that fight with him and him and Nick was phenomenal. I, I do think that Nick won that fight though. And I also think that when you throw their term, the, like, GSP is the greatest fighter of all time. I'll have to disagree because what makes a good fighter? His ability to constantly be fighting. And now George has quit and he doesn't have anybody that's coming up from underneath him that he's building and to, to carry kind of his legacy. He's just kind of wrapping it up and saying, all right, I'm done. Well, See he has that. Rory McDonald, you know, at, at TriStar. He's got a whole slew of young fighters at TriStar right now. We just had uh, Arnold Allen talk to us on the show. Uh, Mandel Nalo, but I, I get, I understand the point that you're trying to prove. Um, there was that talk of Nick Diaz fighting George Masvidal, as you, as you may recall. Was there right. anything to that? And is there any chance of that happening? Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, I, Nick's trying to fight who, who the people think are the best fighters right now. So he does want to fight. That, yeah. What? I mean, I don't, I don't think he wants to, but he, he will if he have to. He will if it like his perfect example is is so what happened with Masvidal in that situation. He's a prized fighter, so he's going to fight if the money makes sense, or if he has a reason to. And the reason would be to shut people up like Askren or Colby Covington. Those 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 are the people that like they need a, they need a little adjustment, especially Askren. That so he dude, he would fight Ben Askren. I don't see why not. I I don't see why he wouldn't fight Askren or Colby. Wow. Well, that's interesting. Or, or, I didn't know, you know that. What? Another, another person could be. Didn't who did Stylebender just beat? Uh, Anderson Silva. But he has a fight. You know, he has a fight in May. Yeah, but why aren't why aren't the, you know the UFC is wanting all these numbers and these changes, and they want to they want to idolize these people like Conor McGregor and and build this 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 perception for the public to see like these are the people that you should be tuned in and they want to completely disregard Nick. And I'm like, Nick's, Nick's the greatest fighter you guys have ever had. He's the biggest draw. He knows, he knows more about fighting and, and the world of fighting than it, most people on your roster combined. And you guys want to pretend like he's not, he's not the face of, of your organization. Like they want to push these other images. And I'm just like, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Right. All right. So what do you think? Do you think he does come back? I mean, we're approaching almost five years now. I think that I think that they should get that fight going with, with one of the guys in the top three at okay. least in that division. That would make the most sense, don't you? Uh, sure. I mean, I I like the Askren idea. I like the Masvidal idea. Uh, if they can. Well, get... no, no. Now, yeah. Well, now they're going to try to make Askren and and uh, and um, what's his name again? Because I guess that was a fluke. Well, yeah, I don't think it was a fluke. I think it was. Oh, Robbie. Was, no, I don't was... think that that's going to happen. I hope not. It should, why, then, then, then put Asker in a fight, Nick. Okay. I wish I knew this before. I wish I knew this before Asker came on. Would have asked him. Well, just get those, get the people who the, you know, get the guys who they think are the best right now. Right. And and you know what? It's going to be a heck of a lot easier because you saw this testing now, right? So all those fights that you saw Nick kind of just get out and and you look like, oh my gosh, that was almost effortless. 
imagine what it's going to be like now that people are, are much more um, held to yeah. the standard of USADA. And you're, and you're Nixon, sort of his manager, Nixon. right? Like you, you're the one who talks to the UFC. Is that accurate? Uh, we're, we're a team. Right, we're, right. we're all a team. You're the link, I guess. Team. You're the one having the discussions. I'm just I'm just here doing my part, whatever that right. is. Right now, yesterday, my part was get on the, on the road with Nick and and run, and we ran for for 13 and a half miles. Wow! And, and Nate was with you guys ran, too, right? Uh, yeah, we met up in the in the end end of the day because he did he did his run the day before. Oh, okay. And he did his run his day before with Chris Avila, and and he's got a fight coming up in Bellator, so they're getting ready. We're all we're all just here getting ready, and. And yesterday when we went on this run in Stockton, like he showed me his old high school, his old, the old parks he used to get in fights in, some of the other stuff. And it really gave me an insight and perspective into how he became the guy that he is today. And I think a lot of that has to do with his upbringing, right? Right. C could, I ask so about, I, could I ask about what Dylan Dennis said last week? Did you hear his comments? No, what he said. You, you didn't hear when he was on the show last week? He's just so boring, and I, it's hard for me to pay any attention to him. And like people are trying to hype this up, this idea of, of us between each other, and I'm just like, why? He's so boring, and he he has no, he's so he's he's a he's an, a prime example of one of, of, of single single dimension. Like what what does he do that's good? Jujitsu? He's got he's got 30 matches at Black Belt. I have 200. What is he? He, he did win his okay, debut though, right? He won his debut via submission, so he stuck to his bread and butter. Okay, great. He pulled guard. Looked like a pussy. Excuse my language. <laughs> All right. Like, what do you, what do you want me to do? He sit, sat there and went for a toehold. I could have done that against that guy. I wanted to challenge myself. Fair enough. You know, like I didn't I didn't cross I didn't cross a line to get in MMA. I I I, I started a new road, and this is a very very long road that's going to be, you know, full of ups and downs and curves. This is just the beginning. Like that that first fight was. It was important to me to just get things running. I took it on two weeks' notice, and the yeah. opponent changed four times. Hey, it'd be it'd be great. It'd be real nice to have the treatment that that Danis gets. With his only thing that's that's enabling that is his relationship to his, his uh, friend Connor. That's kind of it, uh, putting his his career on a silver platter. Right. What has he done? Like you know, he wrestled in high school. I don't know, like one year. I wrestled in high school and college. I got a degree in, 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 in college. And then I got my black belt. And then I became a world champion at a black belt. And I ran cross country. I'm doing, we're, we're gearing up for a big triathlon season. And like, this is, this is what makes, this is the formula. This is, this is what, this is what changes that. And like, he, he wants to pretend like he's, he's a better fighter than me. Okay. Then, then, then figure it out. I, I sure as heck don't think that you should feel comfortable if we come face to face. Or if we're around each other, because that's not going to look good on you. So his best bet is to stay away and say as much things as he can to try to intimidate me. But I think he knows damn well that he, he's got no intimidation or ability to, to get under my skin. I just I, I, wish, that, I wish that society and, and even MMA fans as a whole would see, would see a, a better value in these guys that, that go through it. Like guys mm -hmm. like Nick, who, who went through so much road work and miles and hours and time and, and spent. He's taught me this, these nunchucks. Yeah. He's taught me these nunchucks. And this has taught me so much about that. I've, I've learned so much about striking with nunchucks. Okay. Right? But uh, you can do so much. Wow. Oh my. You can learn, you can learn about speed, timing, balance. And, and these, these are the things that the other guys don't want to do. Like they don't want to go and put, put a half a marathon in on, on St. Patty's day. When all their other friends are doing it, they don't. Ben Askren doesn't want to go into jujitsu practice and put the gi on. I did, and I was the only American that was in there doing it. And Nick, Nick, the same. He's a he's a black belt as well. AJ, unfortunately, we're out of time. We have a hard out, but this has been great, and I appreciate you taking the time, updating us on a lot of different things. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, keep us posted on when you get that next assignment. Yeah, I'll keep you posted, and then I'll send you some samples of the CBD product that we al we have almost finished. It's uh, in final negotiations. This is what Nick has been working on with his brother. They're building a, a pretty good company, and and um, we got some samples. I'll send you some because it'll it'll help it'll help you. All right, I appreciate that. Thank you, AJ. I didn't I didn't have a gift for you. So no, I feel it's okay. Bad. Look, your your presence alone was a gift.
See you, bro. Bye, AJ. There he is, AJ Agazarm, joining us.